Hi, my name is Billy, and I'm going to be showing you my 2022 art school portfolio. Before we actually get into the contents of the portfolio, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the admissions process and, and my academic background. Feel free to skip this part. Um, I should have a timestamp below that just will bring you just to the portfolio part. I attended public school for all 12 years of my education, and when I graduated in high school, I had a 3.7 overall GPA. I took mainly regular level classes with a couple honors classes, and finally two APs in my senior year. So I did AP art and design, 2D art and design, and I also did AP psychology. Um, I'm going to be making a video about my AP art portfolio because I actually got a five on it, which is crazy. Um, if you would like to know, I got a two on the other one, but whatever. I was a part of the GSA at my school. I was actually in a leadership position for two years um, in freshman and sophomore year. Um, and I also did esports in my freshman year. But afterwards, I did not do any other extracurriculars. So I applied all regular decision to a total of eight schools, six of which were actually art schools, and two were um, not, like others. These schools were the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, Massachusetts College of Art and Design, Rhode Island School of Design, California College of the Arts, Parsons School of Visual Design, University of Massachusetts Boston, and University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. I was lucky to get into seven of my eight schools. The only one I didn't get into was RISD. It was kind of expected, but it's whatever. A typical art school portfolio typically includes anywhere from 12 to 20 pictures or slides of your best artwork. On top of this, some schools actually require um, a special edition, like the completion of like a challenge or a prompt. So in my case, that was RISD and Parsons. I will introduce the prompts from both of these schools when I get to the piece that I answered the prompts with. This portfolio that I'm presenting to you um, wasn't the exact one I submitted to each school. There was some that I did less or maybe a little bit more. Um, I obviously tried really hard to cater to each different school, which is something I recommend you doing. I'm going to give brief descriptions of each piece with the medium, title, the date, etc. So I'm actually just going to put all the pieces up on the screen, like right here. All right, so the first piece I'm going to be talking about is called Candyland. Um, this was almost always the first piece I put in my portfolio just because I think it's really strong. This was done digitally in Procreate. Um, it was done in 20, 2021. It's A4 size, which is 210 millimeters by 297. I included this because I think it showcases my ability to do realistic stuff while also making it kind of a narrative. The background behind this piece is basically just I took pictures of pastries at the grocery store um, and I thought they looked really beautiful so I kind of put them all together and I was thinking of the Candyland board game and there's like <laughs> there's like this gumdrop place like I don't know everything's themed by candy like the whole world is themed by candy and I was like thinking of that when I made this. Okay so the next piece is Bad Habits. This is charcoal on paper. Um, it's about 13.5 inches by 11 inches. This was done in, I believe, 2019. Um, it's a bit of an older piece, but it's one of my favorites. This piece is just a representation of one of my bad habits that I find myself doing when I'm not feeling well, which is picking at my skin. Um, and I was just showing it from like my point of view, I guess. This next piece is really old. I think it's from 2018. It's called Heels because whatever. It's 12 by 16 inches and it's also charcoal. Um, this was also a school project and I thought at the time that it showed like just how comfortable I am with charcoal, I guess. Um, but I kind of don't like this and don't really recommend putting stuff like this in because it, they're floating in space and it looks weird. Anyways. So this is the self-portrait diptych that I put in. It's about 12 inches by 8 inches and it's multimedia. 
This again was a school project. We were told to paint ourselves in like six different ways. Um, so with watercolor, acrylic, stuff like that. Um, and using different techniques such as blur or like a fauvist um, painting. <laughs> At the end of creating all these, we were told to take pieces of them and then try to create a new image with everything. My art teacher really liked this piece and really recommended that I put it in my portfolio, so I did. <laughs> okay, so these are gesture drawings. They're really bad, but they're the only ones I could find. Um, they're also charcoal, but it's on newsprint. They're each about 21 inches by 16 inches each, so each page. Um, I included it to show that I have drawn from life and um, gesture drawings and like figure drawings are like very important to show. I also want to show that I'm able to work on a larger scale as well. These were... <laughs> but they're not, they're not great. So this one was probably one of my first serious pieces digitally. Again, it was done with Procreate. It's called Too Much. Um, it's 530 pixels by 780 pixels um, and it's about my gender identity and how I express myself through lots of feminine things, um, although being non-binary and it's just a capture of the excessiveness that I use as expression. This piece is like really pixely, like I really didn't understand how digital art works, so it's Definitely not my strongest piece, but I like it. Ah! Oh my god. I hate this. This is called Dinner Table. It's colored pencil on toned paper. It's 9 by 12 inches. Um, it's from life. I did this at my table in like 30 minutes. I was worried because I didn't have enough stuff that was from life. Um, I also wanted to show more mediums other than digital and charcoal. But yeah, it's really bad. It's like one of my first times using colored pencil. It's... I've totally been forgetting to say the dates, but for the most part, all of these were done in 2022 or 2021. The next piece is Happy Cry, and it's acrylic paint on a wood panel. It's 12 inches by 12 inches. This is a self-portrait of me. I uh, took, <laughs> I got really dressed up and I went in my bathroom and I pretended like I was crying and like put water in my face and then took a picture of myself like, ah. This piece is about my relationship with showing sadness and crying because I had a really hard time with those things when I was younger. Um, and as I got more comfortable with my identity, um, as I got more comfortable with my identity, I um, therefore be became more comfortable with my emotions as well. So it was easier for me to do things like cry and laugh and get mad um, in like a healthy way. So this is a polymer, <laughs> polymer clay sculpture. It has acrylic paint and resin on it as well it's her name is fairy it's eight by five by five inches basically this is like i went out of my way to go research the origin stories of fairies and stuff um and i read somewhere that they were considered to be like fallen angels um so I made up this big narrative that this was an angel who fell from heaven, but as she fell to the earth, the roots of the ground <laughs> grew around her and she like morphed and got all ugly kind of as a punishment of God. The whole idea of fallen angels is like they were trying to go to heaven and then God was like, what the hell? And shut the doors to heaven, but the angels that didn't make it to hell or weren't in heaven, like when the doors got shut, just like dipped. This was also my first sculpture ever. So this is the sketchbook planning for fairy. Um, it's done with graphite, watercolor pen, yada yada. 
Um, and it just shows my process, which I found a lot of my schools were looking for. They wanted to see your, the artistic process behind your art. Okay, so for Parsons, Parsons had a, um, a challenge for your portfolio that basically was like, make a piece inspired by another piece in your portfolio. So this is called Siren. It's um, graphite on watercolor paper. It's huge. It's 22 by 30 inches. Um, and like fairy, I took, I went, <laughs> I took the term siren and I did research on it to try and figure out um, what were some of the background stories on it. Um, and I heard somewhere that they were cannibals. So that's why she's eating somebody. And I also read into like the Greek, um, the Greek definition of a siren, which are more like birds and less like fish, which was weird. This was another sketchbook spread. This is probably one of my favorite spreads of all time. I made this in like a pretty dark time in my life. So I got to like squeeze the juice out of that story-wise in my portfolio. Um, but I just like really like how this looks. This piece is called Disassociation. Fun fact, I fucking spelled that word wrong in my actual portfolio submissions to schools and didn't realize like halfway. So there's, <laughs> good job. It's 12 by 12 inches. It's acrylic paint on canvas. Um, this was a piece that I did when I was having a not good time. And to try and cope, I, in a healthy way, I just painted myself looking in a mirror. This is like my mom's favorite piece, so that's why I included it. I also really like it. I like the texture on it a lot. This might have been a, done in 2019 or 2020. Okay, this last piece is called Gross. It's also digital. Um, it was done at A4 size as well. This was done in 2022. This was like, this is kind of like my big piece. Um, I actually submitted this to the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, and it won two awards, um, a gold and a silver, both were just regional. Um, I think I put it under digital media and multimedia because, I don't know, I use like different programs, so I like that, I don't know. In my brain that was multimedia, but I think about it and I'm like, it's not really what it is. This is basically about also my gender expression, and it's about how um, humor plays in with my femininity and how those two combining really embody my gender and how I like to express it. So basically, also I just wanted to draw a really pretty person sitting on a toilet, and that's what I did. And then I had to give it meaning, so that's basically the makeshift meaning about it. So this last piece is for my RISD um, art challenge and it was a pain in the ass. Basically RISD, they were looking to two answers to two different questions for the portfolio challenge. So basically two pieces of artwork. The first one was talking mainly about um, your process. So the brainstorming, what the behind the scenes of the, the final product. Um, and then the second one, of course, was the final product. So I, this is just the final product. I forget, I, it's like, I don't have a photo of the other one. I'm too lazy to go find it. I just found out Rizzy doesn't isn't doing that anymore. That's crazy. Huh. So they're not doing the challenges anymore, so whatever. Okay, weird. Damn, I really can't find it, but um, basically, I, the two words that I chose that were the prompt or whatever was chaos and order because it was the easiest for me to understand and I was like, cool. This piece is basically about uh, government control and the tensions about that. Uh, it's about um, a world a dystopian future where those things have risen extremely to the point of where there's like think about how an avatar how they have those like big machines and shit that they walk in it's basically that but it's like police control basically 
and it's gotten to the point of where like police roam the streets and stuff like that. This is one of those robots, um, but this was found many years after kind of the, the height of this um, government control and stuff like that. And there was like a riot or something and it like crumbled down. Long story short, basically they don't, they aren't like a working thing anymore. So this little girl finds it and she names it Sleepy because he was laying down and she was like, oh my god, she's asleep. Um, and she t like rebuilds it and decorates it and stuff and it becomes like her friend and like her like vessel or whatever. Um, and so obviously the order is the police stuff and like the actual robot itself and then the chaos is going to be the, the girl. So that's pretty much my portfolio. I want to talk a little bit about some tips or something that I can give to um, future applicants or people who just want to build a portfolio um, to be looked at or something. <laughs> okay, number one, I really recommend that you try and go out of your comfort zone. A lot of colleges want to see variety. They want to see that you're um, adventurous with art. They want to see like how your brain works and how you make art and stuff like that so they're really gonna be looking for like variety and not like the same like if you're a digital artist don't do just only digital art you're gonna need to do like at least two different mediums number two is definitely go out of your way to get to go to portfolio reviews a lot of schools have them um either online or in person and basically you just get a professional who's working in college admissions or out of college um, especially one that you're looking at applying to and they basically can give you information on what you should work on and blah 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 and if you're going in the in a good direction or in the bad direction so my third tip is definitely not to wait till the last minute i did a lot of my work in like winter break um in in the coming weeks um, before my final deadlines. A lot of my deadlines were in February. I had a couple in April as well. It was just, it's not worth it. You need your sleep. You make your best art when it is, when you're not rushing. Um, you can still make good art and like by time crunching and stuff. Like, so if you are in that position and it's, there's, you can't go back in time, you're gonna get, be able to get it done. I did most of my art two weeks before the deadline. So you can get it done. It's going to be hard though. Um, and please remember to eat and drink water when you do that. <laughs> I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you watched all the way through, I'm very thankful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to make an AP art portfolio sometime soon and I'm looking to make more videos as time goes on. I'm feeling very excited about it. So. If you have any questions, um, concerns, critiques, whatever, you can leave them in the comments or DM me on Instagram. Bye!